Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do the top 10 Unipress book tag. This was created by Biblio Atlas and I was also tagged by her. I will link her original video in the description. Uh, I love this tag because university presses is something that uh, I really appreciate. I think that they do publish a lot of really interesting books, uh, especially I found that they often publish nonfiction books on very niche or specific topics that bigger publishers might not take the chance on. Uh, so I love this idea of this tag bringing these books more attention um, that they, than they normally get on uh, booktube. The idea of this tag is basically to show your top 10 favorite um, books published by university presses, but I have decided to split this uh, video into two sections. Uh, so first I'm going to talk, talk about my top five uh, university press books that I've read and recommend, and the other part is going to be my top five TBR books published by university presses. So f starting uh, from the bottom up uh, with my recommendations, we have Dr. Gollum, How to Think About Medicine by Harry Collins and Trevor Pinch, which was published by the University of Chicago Press. So in eight chapters, uh, devoted to case studies of modern mo medicine, Harry Collins' Term of Pinch looks at uh, specific areas of medicine like AIDS, um, the placebo effect. Uh, I remember uh, one of the chapters that has really stuck with me was the chapter on vaccination. I remember finding this book really thought-provoking in uh, a lot of the aspects of medicine that I hadn't really considered before reading this book. Um, the chapter on placebo effect I remember also being especially good. Um, so this was a book that I had uh, assigned to read a few chapters on and ended up reading the entire book because I found it so engaging and easy to read but still thinking a lot through the questions raised in this and especially I think uh, from my remembrance of this, uh, the, the case study approach made it uh, very clear and, and um, concrete in the, uh, the more general discussion on medicine. Uh, so this is a book I would recommend based on my reading of this, but it's been a few years, so I should probably reread this at, at some point. The next one I wanted to talk about is one of the, probably one of the most significant books that I've read for my criminology studies. This is the Swedish translation, but it is uh, Asylums by uh, Irving Goffman. The English uh, version of this book is published by Sage, so it isn't necessarily a university press, but rather an academic one. Uh, so I thought that I would include it anyway, and it is talking about uh, various institutions that have built-in control and surveillance. So specifically looking at uh, places like prisons and asylums and talking about how the inbuilt, the built-in surveillance and control shape the life within the, the, the walls of the institution. Definitely uh, topics that we need to think about in, in the current climate of um, criminal policies and politics. I just think that this is one of the best books uh, around the topic and it's definitely a very influential one as well. The next one I want to talk about is Bill Evans' How My Heart Sings by Peter Pettinger and this was published by Yale University Press. So this is a biography of Bill Evans who was a really famous jazz pianist following his entire life, uh, looking at all of the influences in his career, uh, looking at each individual album and anything that he recorded, anything that he uh, performed, and the influences in that, the production of it, the sort of the behind the, sc the scenes and all of those things. Towards the end it's also talking about his uh, drug addiction and how he eventually OD'd. This is the only Bill, B Bill Evans biography that I know of, um, and I think because of that it is an invaluable book if you are someone who loves his music. Uh, one of the things that I love about this book is that uh, the the author has a quite analytical tone to his uh, discussion on Bill Evans' music. So he isn't just talking about Bill Evans' life, but also does include analysis of his music and his composition, um, or his, his composing. One of the things that he talks about is the, the classical music roots that Bill Evans had and how he married uh, classical music and jazz together, which uh, is, I think, one of the reasons I love Evans so much much and that I hadn't uh, realized before because I love both class musical, classical music and jazz. Um, but as I said, I think this is the only Bill Evans biography that exists. Uh, so it is a quite dry book. Um, it's quite fact heavy and 
um, slow going, uh, at least it was for me, um, but it is invaluable if you are someone who is interested in his music and want to learn more about the man behind it. The next one have more of a general appeal, I think. It is much more accessible anyway, and that is Winter Season, a dancer's journal by Tony Bentley, which is published by University Press of Florida. So uh, this is a, a ballet dancer's journal of one season in the 80s. This is a book talking about the lived experience of a professional ballet dancer that isn't necessarily the lead of the ballet company she uh, works for. Uh, it follows her every day and all of the, the details of that. Um, so it gives you sort of the behind the scenes of a ballet production and uh, a ballet dancer's experiences. Uh, I think the thing that I love especially about this and why I would recommend it to people with a general interest is that she shows how the sort of the lived experience of having art as a profession, um, having an artistic pursuit as your central uh, life purpose. So um, she illustrates the way that the ballet dancing shapes her entire lifestyle and all of the decisions that she makes on a daily basis. When she goes to bed, what she eats, uh, when she goes out to see her friends and family, when she travels, um, everything in a day is shaped by this one thing. And so it's such a, a complete and consuming aspect of her life. So it's not just her job, but her her entire life um, and uh, also the fact that ballet dancing often means a very short career so uh, we have those two aspects in this book that is so strongly portrayed and so honestly portrayed in this book and I would highly recommend it. The number one of my recommendations of books published by university presses is The Fall of Language in the Age of English by Minae Mizumura, translated by Mari Yoshihara and Juliet Winters Carpenters, published by Columbia University Press. So this I've actually done a full book review of, so I won't talk about it too much. I will link the video review that I did uh, in the cards and in the description. Uh, but basically, if you are someone who is uh, a language learner, if you are a non-native English speaker, I think this book is so worth your time. But actually, I would recommend this to everyone because it is talking about um, English as a universal language or uh, close to a universal language and what that means to the world, especially to all of the other languages that are falling by the wayside and how the um, other uh, nations and other uh, languages and cultures are being affected by uh, English becoming this global language. Uh, it is a really thought-provoking book and one that I haven't stopped thinking about since I read it last year. It is uh, talking about um, language in connection with identity, with um, literary uh, heritage and history. She is talking from a Japanese context, uh, so there are certain things that give the Japanese example, but it is so applicable to other parts of the world. And then we have my TBR. So there are a lot of books that I want to read that are published by university presses. And actually my um, nonfiction reading challenge that I'm doing this year, one of the challenges is to read a um, book published by University Press. Uh, so I will get to that later uh, in this TBR because I have already chosen my book for that challenge. Uh, but starting with the bottom up, uh, again, although this is not really a strong order or anything like that, um, but anyway, starting with the number five, we have Nutcracker Nation, How an Old World Ballet Became a Christmas Tradition in the New World by Jennifer Fisher, published by Yale University Press again. So it's probably obvious by now that I am in someone who loves ballet and not the Nutcracker uh, Tchaikovsky music is uh, one of my favorite um, like albums or, or musical uh, compositions uh, ever. So I love the story of the Nutcracker, I love the music, and I love ballet. So all of these things together, as well as Christmas, um, as I will be returning to, 
makes me want to read this book so much. I think it would be a perfect book to read over the winter season. Um, so the description of this says, a lively discussion of North America's favorite ballet, its history, production, and significance. The Nutcracker is the most popular ballet in the world which I'm not surprised about, adopted and adapted by hundreds and communities, hundreds of communities across the United States and Canada every Christmas season. So I don't think I need to say anything more. I want this book so much. So there's that. Speaking of Christmas, as I said, I have chosen the book that I will be reading for my nonfiction reading challenge this year, and that is Merry Christmas. Um, celebrating America's Greatest Holiday by Carol Carol and Marling, published by Harvard University Press. So this is a history book about Christmas and all of the various Christmas traditions, especially talking from the American context. So it's talking about wrapping paper, about Christmas villages, that is apparently a thing in the US that I hadn't heard about uh, before picking this up. Um, it's talking about um, gifts and trees and all of the various traditions that we associate with Christmas with, as I said, the American context. So I think there are gonna be things that I will recognize uh, from my own experience and some things that uh, are probably gonna be new to me uh, because not every American tradition has translated into the Swedish one in terms of Christmas uh, celebrating. But I love uh, Christmas as a holiday and I especially like learning about it and the traditions as I've said. Uh, so this book is all about that and with a quite academic tone to it, which I love. Uh, and it is filled with photographs as well. I will show you something. Um, so I have actually started reading this a couple of years ago uh, and I love the beginning of it. But uh, I didn't end up finishing it before uh, Christmas was already over. So I put it aside. Christmas cards. Uh, so I have decided to pick this up in December this year and hopefully start it at the beginning of the month so I can actually finish it before Christmas. In third place we have uh, this one. So the English uh, version of this is what I'm going for because the Swedish one is called Denne dagen et liv um, by Jens Andersen and this is a Danish author but the English translation came out I think last year or this year. Uh, it's just called Astrid Lindgren, the woman behind Pippi Longstocking and it is published by... Uh, Yale University Press. Um, and this, as I said, is a biography of Astrid Lindgren and uh, she is the creator of Pippi Longstocking and a lot of other stories as well. I want to learn more about her and I am quite familiar with her work but not so much about her life aside from the um, biopic that I saw earlier in this year that I loved that is called Young Astrid or something like that. Um, I will link it in the description. I would so recommend watching that because it was fantastic. In second place we have Flora of Middle Earth, Plants of J.R.R. Tolkien's Legendarium by Walter S. Judd and Graham A. Judd, published by Oxford University Press. I recently finished the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I think I finished it in June, uh, and I've been reading it for a while. Um, and currently I'm, I'm reading The Silmarillion with uh, Yamini and um, Mary. I will link their channels in the in the description. Uh, but we are but buddy reading the the Silmarillion, and it's got me thinking a lot about Middle Earth. Uh, and I've been really enjoying getting to know the the world that Tolkien has created. And of course, as you all probably know by now, I love nature writing. So this book combines those two things, and. I really, really want this book. Uh, I have a feeling I would love it, so I'm not gonna say anything more. I think it's pretty obvious why I'm interested in this. And in my top one book that I want to read, published by University Press, is The Work of the Dead. A Cultural History of Mortal Remains by Thomas W. Lacour, um, published by Princeton. So. Uh, this is a book I was recommended by Andrea from Infinite Text. So it's talking about all things related to dead bodies. I have been so excited to, to read it ever since I bought it earlier this year and I am planning to read this probably for nonfiction November. Um, 
or maybe even start it uh, right before uh, around Halloween time and uh, read it in Nonfiction November, probably. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for this book and I have a feeling I will love it because uh, I do find it be uh, I do find it really interesting to read about death rituals and death attitudes uh, and how we deal with dead bodies and and and, um, and mortality uh, which is all obviously going to be related to the topic of this so those were the books that I wanted to talk about for this book tag I wanted to tag three people and first we have Andrea from Infinite Text that I just mentioned uh, then we have Heidi from My Reading Life and lastly, Juliana from The Blank Garden. I hope you're having a good day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.